doing a little bit of work tonight. Figured I would pop on live. See how everybody's doing, how the week was for some UGC work. I had a pretty, pretty stable week this week. I had three UGC orders come in, which was pretty exciting. And uh, hey, happy Saturday. I know, I'm still working. Why am I working? <laughs> I feel like I'm always working nowadays. A lot of things are happening. It's very exciting. I feel like I can't sleep because I'm just... <clears throat> constantly. And of course now I'm getting sick. Can you believe it? I'm getting sick again. I feel like my husband came home with a stuffy nose and <clears throat> here we go. I feel like I'm getting sick now, but so I may not be live again for, I don't know, a couple days. Hopefully I can kick it. I won't get actually sick, but if I do, that's why I'm not on live. I like to go live every, you know, couple days. I enjoy it. I enjoy talking with like-minded individuals that want to freelance and you know do some side hustles get some extra money in um <clears throat> and of course the trending ugc work which is always really exciting i actually had let me take a look i'm in front of my computer i have a couple voiceovers to do if you guys have any questions drop them in but um i have a voiceover to do that i'm gonna do but it was really fiverr was slow this week but steady steady but slow if that makes sense you know, you know, those weeks where it's like, all right, I made, I made how much I feel like I should make, but it's not busy, you know, <laughs> I mean, you love what you do. I took the day off. Nice. Good. I think I'm going to take tomorrow off because I think I need the break. I need a little break, but I don't know. I just got this new setup for my backdrop and I was like really excited. This is the first time I'm going live with this thing in the back and I love it so much. I got it off of Amazon and it is my new favorite accessory. I should say my new favorite business expense, right off. Um, <laughs> and I'm loving it. It literally was like $85 and it comes with the shelf and it just blocks the mess in the back. So I'm sorry you guys cannot see my messy house right now. So <laughs> I was excited to do this. I make, con I make content daily for affiliate marketing. So I thought I may look into UGC. Yeah, definitely. I can't see. Let me see how many. You have 22,000 followers get on it you could charge so much extra because of your following um <coughs> excuse me I do think I'm getting sick but anyway I'm still showing up so yeah I feel like anybody who's already making content is just the right you're in the exact right place to make UGC um you look like Velma but better <laughs> oh my god with the orange shirt <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Thank you. I think she's super cute. I love that actress. I don't even remember her name. What's her name? But she's awesome. She's in Grandma's Boy. I love her. Um, Don't know how. So a lot of people are trending and talking about UGC by doing outreach, like cold pitching to brands on Twitter, you know, even TikTok. Like you can contact if you see an ad pop up. <laughs> so we Scooby-Doo. I know, right? So, um... A lot of people are, you know, are talking about Twitter and uh, and TikTok and you can like contact the people that run ads and just, you know, cold pitch, a lot of cold pitching. I don't do that method. Um, I just don't have the time. I, I've been on Fiverr for the last six years. So I really just, I just added a gig. I added my UGC gig and that's how I get all of my work. It is very... It's not saturated, but it's it's very high demand right now on Fiverr. People are looking for good UGC creators, good Fiverr sellers on Fiverr. So are you familiar with Fiverr? I'm sorry, drop your name in the chat so I know who I'm talking to. Um, all right, cool, man. Thank you. But we're not talking about Scooby-Doo. I appreciate the comment. But if you want to talk freelance, we can talk about that. Awesome. Um, do you have samples of your work? Right now, all of my samples are on my Fiverr gigs if the buyer allowed it to be put on the portfolio. I am working on my own website, which will be arbelkimic.com. I'm in the works with it. I'm working on it and I'm trying to put some portfolio samples on there. I just, uh, I'm doing a million things. So I have a girl working on it right now and she's not done yet. But eventually what I plan on doing, I need to work on it this week, is create a private YouTube playlist where I have all of my samples. I did post a couple on my TikTok, but I, don't, I haven't posted all of them just because I'm not, 
<clears throat> I'm really not trying to focus so much on being a UGC creator. Like I enjoy the work coming in and I enjoy doing it, but I really want to just more focus on teaching others how to do it simply like on your phone from your car. You know, I have two kids. Like I want to be able to be on the move and still work. Like that's, you know, I posted a video recently of, I did a UGC video for a kid's product and I was able to have my kids use the product while I recorded them, which I would have done anyway. So it's like a win-win for me, you know? So I'm, I'm more focused on this channel to teach others how to do it like I do it, where I do it on my phone, like how to edit and all those things. I have so many more tutorials coming. Do I do one? I, I do, I do. Um, right now I'm charging 150 an hour. And basically what that is, is we get on a Zoom call if you're not on Fiverr, I will literally walk you through every single step of the way. Um, because I'm just kind of starting this, I'm not like firm on the one hour. Like, I'm not going to leave you hanging, you know, at the 60 minute mark. Like, peace, you know, I'm not going to do that to you. So, um, for instance, I had a consult the other day and it ran almost two hours. And I just, you know, we got to the point where we created the gig. We got all the way to the point where she hit publish. And then she had to wait for Fiverr to approve her W-9. So we ended the call at that point. And now we're actually going to jump on another call. So I, I really try and like <clears throat> work with you to get this up and going. Do you have a Fiverr account right now for like a buyer account or any kind of account on Fiverr? Um, because if you already have an account, it makes things a little bit easier the other thing I could do with what I'm working on is creating like a create the account on your own and then we create the gig together. Okay. Yeah, so it's up to you. Um, <clears throat> you can actually just go over to my stand link. I offer a couple of options. Um, what is your name? Did you drop your name? Sorry. But yeah, I will walk you through literally creating the account, creating this, the gig, getting you up and running. And what's so amazing about Fiverr, Angie. Oh, Angie's online side hustle. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thank you, Angie. Yeah. So yeah, check out my stand link. I offer a couple of things and then we can definitely jump on a chat and just get everything going. What I really love about Fiverr is it just comes to you. It's all inbound. You don't have to do any outreach. So it seems like you're already, you know, doing a bunch of things. So this is just going to be an addition to, um, and it can take off. Like you can offer so many different services. Fiverr has so many subcategories of services that they offer. It's yeah, it's incredible. Like I did my first consult and I was actually really nervous about it because he's, um, he's a chemist. He's a chemist and he wants to do science tutoring. And I was like, I really, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, like I'm in the internet marketing world. I'm not in education, you know, but I was like, I'm sure Fiverr has something. So he's like, yeah, let's just see what we can find. And we went through it and they actually had his exact subcategory. They have a tutoring under lifestyle. When you go to Fiverr, you can go to the lifestyle tab and put that down and it's online tutoring. And then online tutoring gets broken down into the subjects. And then each subject gets broken into more subjects. So like the science one went down to chemistry and then chemistry went to organic, bio, like all the different chemistries. And I was like, mind blown. I could not believe that they had organic chemistry on Fiverr. And it's like a thriving, it's a thriving community over there. So they have something for everything. So what I love about Fiverr is that even if you don't want to do UGC, you want to do something else, they most likely have a category that would fit perfectly for you. Um, I'm actually working with somebody right now, Brittany, and she does web design. She does SEO. So that fits perfectly into the Fiverr you know, framework. And so I don't know. And, and the other thing I love about Fiverr is that it's free. The only time you get charged is 20% when the job is complete. So after you've done the job, after the buyer's happy, everything gets marked complete, they just take 20% off the top. That's it. That's like literally, it's like, I don't know, to me, it's a win-win. Um, I've been doing this now for six years. So <coughs> I'm sorry, I do feel like I'm getting sick. But anyway, um, I started in 2015 and I, I had a buyer account from like 2012, I had a buyer account where I would, because I actually had a web design, a freelance web design business back in 2012 up until 2015. 
that's a whole background story. Talk about that another time. But basically, I lost my web design business, long story short, and I needed to find something quick. Otherwise, I would have to go find a nine to five. And that's like my last, that's like next to like asking money for on the side of the road for me personally. So I was like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And I was like, you know what? I've used Fiverr as a buyer for my web design business to outsource brochure design and like, you know, the tedious jobs that you hate doing, I would outsource on Fiverr. And so I was like, you know what, it's, you know, it starts at $5, but I was like, what the hell? Like, if I make a, a couple hundred bucks a week, I'll be happy. And I set up my gig one night. I just like, it just like came to me and I was like, I need to set this up. And I, I set up my, my voiceover gig. I didn't want to do web design anymore because I know that it's very like one-on-one. -on -one and I just, I didn't want to offer that on Fiverr. I didn't think I could do it remotely like that. And so I had a mic that I used for some clients to do their voicemail greetings and whatnot. And I already had the Adobe product. So I said, you know what, what the hell, I'm going to offer voiceovers. And I padded up my room and it took off. Within two weeks, I was slammed. And for the last five years, I haven't had to market myself or do anything because Fiverr provided an income for me that I didn't have to worry about it up until January. But anyway, I'll answer your question. Um, is it residual income or they only pay you once per video? For me personally, I've only had one per video for right now, but I'm in the works to negotiate <clears throat> with like three buyers that they want to do uh, a couple videos a month. But from what I've seen right now, it's one off, but the, the, the Fiverr community and the buyers on there, I think, are just now starting to get familiar with UGC. So now they're knowing, they're knowing what to ask. And just this past week, I've had a couple people ask me, like, how much I would charge for five videos or ten videos or whatever. But as of right now, I've only done one-offs. And that's fine. They'll come back. Um, I've done, I've already done a couple repeat, but not like a contract. You know what I mean? Um, but I also, so in my... On my page, I'm setting up a guide on like how to get started with UGC by using Fiverr. And my part three is going to actually talk about which gigs you need to set up in order to uh, get UGC work from the whole, like the whole gamut of UGC. Because TikTok is only talking about UGC in the product sense, you know, like the beautiful aesthetics of like showing the product and whatever. And that's great. That's UGC. That's fine. But there's also UGC for video spokesperson where you're just talking to the camera like this about like a roofing company or, you know, for their YouTube channel. And then there's actually UGC for Amazon now because Amazon sellers are wanting to get into the, not wanting to get into, Amazon sellers are trying to now do a different approach to product buying by using UGC videos and product photos. So if you look, when you go on Amazon, everyone, we all do, right? And you look on Amazon, you ever see like at the end of the photos, you'll see a video. And usually that's very like, you know, studio, like fake families. And it just looks like really fake, like obviously. But if you pay attention now and then, you'll start to see more of those videos be pe like actual people in their home. And you're like, wait, is this a review or is this, okay, like I could see it going on my wall because I see it on her wall, you know, like in a realistic home. So I have done more unboxing videos, UGC style, than I have UGC. And that's good money. So um, I wouldn't say it's like great money, but it's, it's good money. But those are like one to two minute long. And they want you to have like close-ups of the product and then demo it, show you installing the product. Like I literally did an air balloon pump. I'm on that product page. I'm on that Amazon listing. Like at the end, you'll see my video. Like I'm on there. It's pretty cool. And I'm showing how this air balloon pump works. And it's totally homegrown. And they loved it. Um, I just did bath bombs for an Amazon product. And I have on my counter right now to do a kitchen under cabinet organizer, which I actually need. <laughs> so it's like, that's freaking exciting. My under cabinet under my sink is a mess. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I can show before and after, like no problem. So that's really cool too. Those are like household products, you know, things like that. 
So there's UGC in multiple areas of selling. How can I see your videos? Okay, so how can I shit? Let me see. Let me find it. I saved it because I was like, this is cool. I need to add it to my to my website. Uh, I'm just looking at my screen here. Where did I add this now? Yeah, if you type in, God, what was the name? This was like two months ago now. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. I promise I'll find it. It's an air balloon pump <coughs> on uh, Amazon. And the name of it was called, hold on, I'm gonna find it, I'm gonna find it. It's almost here, where is it? They're, so, they're all the same product, but they're all different names. Ace, Acer, Acer. Hold on, I'm looking. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Ann Besser, Ann Besser. A-N-B-E-S-E-R. Yeah, there's my product. <laughs> I can't show you because the camera, I can't switch the camera. But if you go to, to Amazon and you type in air balloon pump and you type in Ann Besser, A-N-B-E-S-E-R, as 357 reviews. If you go all the way to the end to the video, that's me. <laughs> so I got that through Fiverr. So it's a very exciting time. You know, I know there's a lot of creators that are just like, this isn't new. This isn't new. And I get that. It's not new. I was talking to my sister-in-law who's been in marketing for since like the 80s. She's a little older and sorry, I don't want to say that I'm an 80s girl. But anyway, anyway, um, you know, she's she's been in the field for so long. And she's like, UGC, like user generated content. Like what what's so special about that now? And I was like, oh, like, you know, the term. And she's like, Arbel, that's been around for years. Like that's a marketing term for like photographers who would be freelance and they would, but they would bring in all of their equipment. They would bring in the huge lights and the camera and all of that. And, but they were their own entity. They weren't like a hired employee by the studio. You know what I mean? So that was UGC back then. UGC now is, it, to me, it's completely different because we all have smartphones and our phones take amazing footage. Like, um, I mean, my iPhone 13 can shoot in 4K. Like, are you kidding me? So, and then there's video editing apps. And I think the other thing with UGC now is that our marketing landscape is moving so quickly because of TikTok that we don't have time. Like companies don't have time to go through the whole production to create one video. Like if you made it big on YouTube, it's because you dedicated time to create those longer form videos. But now everything gets pushed out so quickly. Like companies, they don't have time to sit there and, you know, go through all these hoops to produce one pro one video. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense anymore. So the more people that can create the content, the faster it can get put out. And I think that's why UGC is making such a splash, which UGC is only making a splash here on TikTok. If you type in UGC on YouTube, you, there's only like one page of it. So it hasn't moved to other platforms yet, which is very exciting for the opportunity that that can bring of creating content about UGC on other platforms, which is what I'm trying to do. Um, if I don't get sick, then maybe I'll be able to do that this week. <laughs> Hey, how are you? MK Story More. What is your name again? I'm sorry. I always forget. Or did you tell me your name last time? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm bad with names. I really try hard not to be bad with names, but sometimes I am. Um, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Saturday night. Are you working tonight too? Or you're just hanging out? Scrolling TikTok. I like when I see people I enjoy watching on live and I kind of just like set my phone off and I have my AirPods in and I just like listen to them. I feel like that's, it's fun. It's like a podcast that's just right there in front of you. So it's pretty cool. If you guys have any other questions, drop them in. Um, I actually have a voiceover to do, so I'm going to do that with you guys right now. So I'm not just like staring into dead space. Well, not dead space, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's a very exciting time. I do feel like we are a lot is changing. A lot is changing. The algorithm's changing. Everything's changing again and again and again. 
And, you know, we're, we're, if you're not creating content yet, then we need to get on that. You know, we really need to get on creating content. And that's actually going to help you get better at UGC work. Creating content is an excellent way to practice shooting videos, editing them, and then uploading them with that, like, kind of like butterflies in your stomach, like, oh, how's it going to do? You know, I think that's, it's, it makes UGC so much easier if you're already creating content. Like it just, I feel like it goes hand in hand. And a lot of times people, like I had a a customer the other day, a buyer the other day, ask me to, the veggie one, the one I posted actually with my kids and like the veggie uh, seasoning. She was like, you know, we're not familiar with TikTok, but we really just want to like, you know, produce content because we know how important it is, but we're not understanding like the culture yet. So she's like, can you do something that would be feel native to TikTok? And I feel like I did that. I feel like it was kind of adsy, but I feel like I kind of, you know, I'm still learning that, but I felt like they loved it. They were like super excited about it. They really enjoyed it. So that, that helped because I've been creating content advice for wanting to start making content, but just can't get out of your own way. Create a blank account, create this. And what, that's what I did. Um, I did not put my name. I put like some random username. I didn't put my profile image and I just, I dumped everything. I have another account that's still active and I dumped all of my creative ideas on there. As long as you don't sync to your contacts, no one will find you. Like I'm telling you, no one will find you. And if they do like, I don't know, whatever you just, just now is the time because things are changing. And if you notice when you scroll TikTok, there are more ads than there ever have been, which means organic content is going to get harder and harder to push out because TikTok's going to want to make money and they're going to want to push out the ads more than organic. So do it, do it, do it. Just post what you can. It does not matter if it's good or bad. You will find your way. Do anything and everything on that account that you feel matches who you are. And then once you realize the videos that the content that is easy and fun to produce is the one that you should do. And then you create a new account to do it. So for instance, when I first created my account, I did trending sounds and I like hated it. I felt like I just looked so stupid to me. I don't think other people, but for me, you know, for my own personal views. And then I did toy reviews for my kids. I did movie reviews for my kids. I did sister comedy, um, which actually took off. And then I did extrovert comedy. That video got a million views. It's like at a million already. And when that, that hit viral, I was like, this means nothing to me. Like I was annoyed by the notifications because I was like, this means nothing to me. Like I'm not giving out value. I'm not getting paid for it. Like for me, it was nonsense. So at that point I realized, okay, I don't want to create any more of that because that was hard for me to do. It was like an obligation to record more content like that. And then I did a couple videos about Fiverr and I was just like, oh, okay. Like I know Fiverr, like I tell every, like, I mean, if you sit in a room with me personally, I will like go on and on about Fiverr because it, to me, it's such a win-win. Like you have freedom to do whatever you want and you get buyers coming to you. You don't have to market, you know? So anyway, I'm very passionate about it. And so when I did that, it didn't get any views, but it got like 200 views, but I had a ton of engagement on it and I had people asking me and I was like, oh, 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 so my husband and I sat out back and we were, you know, drinking some wine. And we were just talking and I'm like, I think I want to do Fiverr stuff, but I don't want to be like the Fiverr girl because I'm, I don't work for Fiverr. Like there are some bad sides of Fiverr that I don't like, you know? So I said, you know what? I've been a freelancer for 10 years. I know a good amount. Like I'm not like up and up on everything, but I know like a decent amount of freelance stuff. So why not do freelance in general, not just Fiverr. And then I created this account. It slowly took off. Like my friend, her dog account took off faster than mine. And I was kind of like, okay, but it'll get there. It'll get there. I know that there's an audience for this, da, da, da. And then over time I created this account on April 28th. 
So we are not even three months in and I've now, you know, grown and I have amazing engagement and it, it like, I go to sleep super happy. Like I can't even fall asleep because I'm so excited, you know? So I think that's the kind of content that you want to aim for, like something that makes you happy. It doesn't make you cringe. It doesn't make you feel like shit about it. You know what I mean? Like you don't like, you're not too worried about it. Like you're like, I feel confident about that. But in order to find that, you have to just create content. You know what I mean? So, um, did you show yourself? I did. I did. Yeah. I did show myself in my blank account. Um, but, but what I did, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this, but what I did was I, whoever I knew had a TikTok account, my sister, my best friend, and my dad have TikTok accounts. I created this account and I immediately went to their account and I blocked them. I block them. Like if you know people that have a TikTok account and you don't want them to see you, they don't know that you're blocking them. Go to their account and initially block them. And then they will definitely never see your account. Um, so that gave me the freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that they couldn't see my account because I blocked them gave me such freedom to just post whatever the hell I wanted. Um, Actually, before I created that account, I had another account that my dad saw and I did like a stupid trending one where I was like lip syncing or whatever. And he was like, oh, when I saw that, I got so fucking pissed off. And I was like, mm, thank you very much. I'm going to be creating a new account and blocking you. OK, I don't need that feedback. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you learn as you go, but just just do it. Do it. You can do it. I promise. And at the end of the day, no one cares, really. I mean, we're scrolling through. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> um, okay, hold on. I remember your name. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Kurt. <laughs> I'm looking up your email. Hi, Kurt. How are you tonight? <laughs> um, yeah, so just, just do it. At the end of the day, we're all scrolling. We're going fast. And unless it's like a very like mind blowing TikTok. I don't ever think about anybody else's. I'm not like, you know, going to bed like, oh, that girl's video looked like shit. Like I don't, no one thinks that way, you know, like, unless it's like, you see, <laughs> thank you. Unless you see something really traumatic, you know, like so and so, and then you're kind of like, oh, you know, think about it. But I don't ever post things like that. So just do it and figure out what your aim is. <clears throat> thank you. I'm excited to be on your show as well. Um, I saw you sent me some of your UGC work. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I'm sorry, but I'll definitely look at it. And when we chat, we can, thank you for the pet talk. Yeah, no problem. You can do this. Just, just know that people at the end of the day are not worried about what you're producing. They're worried about what they're, they're producing and that's it. So, and if you don't like something that you really like, you went back to bed and you were like, I hate that. Do not delete it. If you delete it, TikTok thinks that you're not confident in your content. So what you do is you click on those three dots and you edit the privacy settings and you make it private. So they're not gone. They'll go in a private folder. And later on, if you feel like, oh, you know what? That actually was good. I'm ready to post that now. You can then like repost it. But if you really feel shitty about a post that you just like, I, I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And it like plagues you then just, just go and put it private. Just don't delete it. Um, unless you don't care about that account. Like that other account, I don't care. I like literally at one point put in the bio, like I'm not active on this account. Stop following it. <laughs> Cause that one video went viral and it was just so annoying. The notif and I am like that type of person that the notifications have to be off, you know, like they have to be gone. They have to be cleared. Otherwise it like drives me crazy. So, so yeah. Um, <laughs> How big of a portfolio did you have before you started to grow on Fiverr? I did not. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. So I did not have a big portfolio. So when I started Fiverr six years ago now, five, six years ago, I did voiceovers. That's my main groove. That's like my, my gig has almost uh, 3,000 reviews. I think I'm at 2,800 reviews. And to be honest, that's my second account. That's why it's not, it doesn't show the accurate date. That's another story time. Uh, basically don't create two accounts in one household because you will get banned. So I had to start all over. So I, um, <clears throat> I have 20. So when I started that, I had never, I didn't have any like voiceover samples. So I just went on Google and I was just like voiceover scripts, or I would 
find a commercial that I really liked and I would write it out from YouTube. Like I would like, you know, transcribe it kind of thing. And then I would just do it and put that in my portfolio. For UGC, um, I did the approach, like people are saying to just use any product in your house. I didn't like that because I don't want the product to look used. So I went to my wish list on Amazon that things that I've been waiting to buy that I just didn't really need. And I was like looking through it and I was like, oh, okay, I know what kind of video I would produce for that. And I would buy it. I mean, it's a business expense at the end of the day um, if you have a business. So I basically was like, I wanted to have the new product. I wanted to have it in the Amazon bag, you know, opening it, which it depends on what kind of video you're doing for UGC. Some UGC videos, that's unnecessary. No one gives a shit what kind of package it comes in. So putting, you know, I that was my initial thing for doing portfolios. And so for my portfolio, and then I just uploaded it to Fiverr and it, it went well. It went really well. Um, your intro video for Fiverr is critical. That's the most important thing. And then the other thing is... Um, not even if you're on Fiverr, if you are a UGC creator and you have your own website and your intro is just text, you guys, like if you guys have a UGC portfolio, make an intro video about yourself. Like you should not, it should, someone should not just be reading your intro about you. You're a video content creator. Make an intro video about who you are. What's your specialty? What do you enjoy shooting? So I'm actually, now that I've learned a little bit more, I'm going to create a new intro video where I talk that I have a four and two year old. I showcase kids products because I enjoy doing that with them. I dress them appropriately, obviously, you know, all of those things. But like, and I also have a nine year old senior boxer. So I'm going to include her too. So if you want to have, you know what I mean? Like there are things in your life that brands need to showcase. Like if you have a dog or a cat or a family member that's willing to do it with you, like include that in there. You know, some people want a husband and wife or brother and sister, you know what I mean? So there's no limit of what you could offer for UGC work. And it's, it, that's what makes it so exciting. Um, Angie, are you still on here? I, don't, I can't tell who's on here. Okay. I think she left. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, Use your, <clears throat> use your environment to help you basically create a portfolio. And like I said, I bought new things. Um, it doesn't have to be brands, you know, it could be a towel rack holder. I mean, I literally got paid $150 to showcase an under cabinet organizer, which I need anyway. So it's like a win-win. So you do see they pay you affiliate. No, this is not affiliate marketing whatsoever. Um, affiliate is basically where you have enough followers that if you were to post a link on your account and people go to it and they purchase it or they subscribe, then you get a percentage. So with UGC, you're essentially a paid actor. You're essentially like, uh, instead of like stock footage and instead of a studio and a paid actor that gets casted by their agency and all of that, you're that and the film and the, the camera person. So you create the video for the product or the service or the Amazon listing and you send it back to the brand and they do whatever they need to do with it. Put it on their website, put it on their Amazon listing, like whatever they need to do for it. So you're just creating the video as if you were a paid actor. Just think of yourself as a paid actor. Create the video and send it back and that's it. And that's it. Um, no, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I'm getting sick. Anyway, um, you don't get a commission. I think some influencers, if you have like over 20,000 followers, you can leverage that. You can like ask for a commission if the video goes viral or whatever, or if it's a paid ad. But usually UGC creators don't have a following. That's the whole point. Um, do you have videos on making your own business out of it and then using things for a write-off? No, I don't, but that's a good idea. <laughs> um, I am not, I set it all up, but I am not to the point where I'm an expert that I feel like I could give solid business advice with that. But I will say that like I have an S Corp. I don't know if that was necessary for me to do. Once you reach like 300,000 in income, 
you get a better tax write-off if you're an S-Corp. Um, but you could just be an LLC. And the benefit of being an LLC is you can file your own taxes with TurboTax. If you're an S-Corp, you can't. You have to have an accountant do it. It's like super complicated. But LLC, writing your taxes is much easier. If you plan on, let's say you have a full-time job and you then want to do UGC on the side and you're going to make money, for tax reasons, it is definitely in your best interest to create an, a business. 100%. Like, I know that. How to do that for every state, I don't know. But 100%, if you have an accountant, check with them. It should be super easy for them to just fill out some information depending on your state. Create an LLC and definitely write off all of this stuff. Plus having a full-time income and a business, ooh, it's good. You'll get money back for sure. I mean, don't quote me on that. I'm not a tax person. But that's definitely the way to do it for sure. Um, how does one start UGC? For me personally, Fiverr. I just set up a gig and orders started coming in. Um, I set up a gig. I created a nice intro video, added a couple samples, done deal, and buyers came to me. Then again, I do have a little bit of leverage because my one gig has almost 3,000 reviews, but that doesn't matter because I've actually, it gives me more leverage, but I've set up now three brand new Fiverr accounts. Two of them were UGC and they got orders like right away because their videos were really good. So <sighs> thank you. Explain things well. Thank you. That makes me feel really good. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm very passionate about it. I love it. I love what I do. Um, but other people like on TikTok that it's all trending, they just created a site, a website. If you're not familiar, a lot of girls are not familiar with how to do a website on Canva. You can make a website. Canva is just, it blows my mind. I cannot believe what Canva can do for people now. I mean, I, when I had my web design business back in 2012, I had to learn Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign to make brochures. And it was so hard. It was so hard. Like you had to know and be creative enough to create this stuff from freaking scratch. There were no templates. Canva is like, it's mind blowing. You could do anything on there. You could do smart mock-ups. You can do, oh my God. So yeah, if you're not familiar with web design, you can go into Canva and create, they have a template for UGC that a lot of people use. And you just fill in all your information and create a site and then create a Twitter account or a TikTok account and just start pitching to brands. I, at the end of the day, I'm actually trying to build this more than I'm trying to build my UGC business. I'm trying to be more of a freelance, I don't want to say coach because I don't like that term really, but just a freelance guide, I guess, um, and specifically for Fiverr. So that's what I'm trying to work on now. Like I'm trying to work on my own YouTube channel, my own website and that kind of thing. So I'm not really focusing so much on pitching to brands. Like whatever UGC work I get is from Fiverr and that's in my portfolio now, which I need to make a portfolio. I have so many things to do. Um, <laughs> take some wellness formula. It helps. Hey, how are you? <laughs> it's good to see you. Gretchen, Gretchen. That's your name, Gretchen. Um, it's good to see you. Take some wellness for me. Yeah, I probably need to take all kinds of vitamins and whatnot. I've been taking some vitamin C. My husband came home with a cold and trying to fight it. Thank God the kids didn't get it. Oh my God, it'd be awful. Um, UGC is user generated content and it's basically like organic looking ads um, that brands will post on their own either website or TikTok channel. You've seen them by scrolling TikTok like when you see an ad that looks like a real person and you're like, is that an ad? That's UGC. So you've definitely seen it. Um, by Theraflu, I'm getting sick and already sick. So, you know what? I got Theraflu and I didn't like it. I didn't like the taste of it. I tried. I really tried. I just, I know my best friend loves it too. She made me go buy it. <clears throat> um, awesome. Appreciate your patience. In it. Yeah, definitely. Coaching is a great opportunity and believe you would do well at it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It is. I feel like that word is just so loaded. Like, especially on TikTok, people are really jaded by that term, coaching. Like, like oh, you're just trying to take my money. You know, I don't know. It's just a, a weird term for me. And I haven't figured out what term I want to use for what I'm creating here. Because at the end of the day, I could care less if you want to join Fiverr. Like, I'm not getting a commission from Fiverr. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care. You know what I mean? But like, 
Are you somebody that has a skill that you could make money off of Fiverr? Like, why aren't you on Fiverr? You know what I mean? Like, it's extra money. It's it's amazing. Um, hey, Mary Ellie, it's good to see you on here. Oh, no. Why did your account get suspended? My account got suspended two times now. My, I was so nervous. I was, like, freaking out for no damn reason. Freelance teacher or mentor is a great term. Freelancer teacher? I don't teacher. Mentor? Maybe mentor. Maybe mentor. That's why that's why I did the big sis. I have something in my eye. Um that's why I did big sis because I wanted to be like that older sister that like not the hard older sister, like the supportive one that like wants you to succeed. That's how my big sister is, you know, like She's tough, but at the same time, she's so, like, knowledgeable, and she just wants the best for me. Like, that's what I wanted to be here. My husband always teases me because I'm the little sister. I'm the youngest of five. So he's like, why are you the big sister on TikTok when you're the little sister? I'm like, but you can't. Like, hey, I'm the freelance little sister, but I know more. Like, I, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't jive. So that's why I did the big sis because, like, again, at the end of the day, I could care less if you want to go on Fiverr. Like, I just... If you want to go on there, I want to see you succeed because that's freaking awesome because Fiverr is such an amazing resource if you can use it well, you know? <laughs> I have no clue. I applied it waiting for TikTok to give it back to me. Okay. Um, yeah, I have gotten banned because or my account got suspended one time like three weeks ago because they said that I was under 13 that I didn't like verify my account. And I was under 13. I was like, I'm clearly not under 13. And I was recording a TikTok when that notification came up. And I was like, I'm not like, like get out of my freaking face. I'm recording here, you know? And then they're like, appeal it. And I appealed it. And I just like filled in everything. I did it really fast. I didn't pay attention. And I like left, I left it. And then I go to like do the video and it jumped onto one of my other accounts. And I was like, wait, where's my freelance account? And I open it and it was gone. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I was like freaking out. I went into like a depression. I swear to God. I was like, Mikey's like, what? My husband's like, what happened? What happened? And I'm just like, oh my God, my account, like everything I've worked for is gone because they say I'm 13. <laughs> He's like, babe, like clearly you're not. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. Like I verified my information and they're still suspending me. Like what's going on here? So I peeled it and they gave me one more shot. And I, what I did wrong is when you take a picture of yourself, you have to like write a code. You have to like write a code on a piece of paper and like hold it up and take a picture. So they like verify that you are who you say you are. I'm like, do you want to see my gray hairs? I'm not 13. I, you know, no. So <laughs> they gave me back my account, but I'm sure you'll get it back. If it was for no reason, like you'll get it back, but it is very scary. I'm sorry you're going through that. That really sucks. Like that is really, you work so hard on this account and that's why I don't know if you have, Mary Ellie, I don't know if you have some kind of email list or something where you grab people's information. But when that happened to me, I was like, I need my followers. Like, I need to know who they are so that I can contact them if they're ever interested in following me on another account or whatever. So that's actually why I created my free gig checklist so that um, when people sign up, yeah, so when people sign up, now I have their email and I'm definitely never going to blast because I hate being bombarded with spam. But essentially, if something were to happen to TikTok or to my account, or I'm now going to be offering something new, I could just send them a quick email and be like, hey, I'm still alive. TikTok just killed me, you know, <laughs> basically. Just create some. I think that's why a lot of cre that's what a lot of creators do is they um is they, they give away free things to basically get your email so that if they need to contact you, if something were to happen, they, they have it. And also, I guess the FCC is talking about banning TikTok and Australia is now joining the talk of banning TikTok. I really hope that doesn't happen because I, I enjoy this platform a lot. Um, not only, oh, thank you for the likes. Not only for the, um, yeah, create something, create something. And you have a lot to, to talk about. So just create some kind of guide in Canva and just put it up there. Um, but yeah, I love TikTok. I've tried. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, you definitely need to have some way to connect with your followers outside of here. So I saw, I think I actually saw that idea from another creator, but I was like, oh, okay. I think the first thing I could give away is my checklist. So I spent like three hours one night, like feverishly, like, you know, filling it out. And I was like, I think I'm giving away too much, but I'm like, okay, whatever. Maybe I'll refine it later. <laughs> but that's done really well for me. I launched that three weeks ago and I now have about 120 uh, subscribers to that. So that's really exciting. That was really exciting for me because I, I've tried in the past to market on YouTube. Um, I had one video go semi-viral back in like 2013. No, uh, I think 2015 or 16 or something. And it got 42,000 views and I got like 300 subscribers on YouTube. And then every time I would post on there, I'd get nothing, no engagement. I got a couple of voiceover orders from it, like trickled in, but I just never could like get into the, like the long form, like content, just couldn't do it. And then with TikTok, it just makes it so much more laid back and Instagram too. Forget Instagram. I literally could not, I'm just not like an aesthetically like perfect person, you know, I'm not like how aesthetic everything is on Instagram. So I just, I have an account. I have like 530 followers on there, but I just never could understand the whole posting of it and what you're supposed to post. And is it supposed to look perfect every time uh, with the filters and all of that? And I just didn't get it. And then with TikTok, I really like, I finally downloaded it last year, a little bit late, just because everybody was like, oh, TikTok's for kids. Ooh. And I was like, yeah, ooh, TikTok's for kids, you know? <laughs> And then finally, I was like, I'm hearing a lot, like a lot of people are becoming viral because of TikTok. And I'm like, I don't think this is for kids anymore. So I downloaded it. I started consuming the content like crazy. I was like, oh, this shit's addicting. But um, I was like, wow, these people are being real. Like, I cannot believe people are showing up in their towels and their robes, like without makeup on, like, what? What is this? I was like, I think this is my platform. <laughs> I am not an aesthetically pleasing, you know, like, whatever. Anyway, so that's why I jive with TikTok and I love this app very much. So I'm hoping it doesn't go away. But anyway, um, yeah, so I really am. I'm trying to build this out. Um, it's been an exciting process because for the last six years, I have haven't done any marketing. Like if I did marketing, it was very, very little um, like, you know, sometimes your ranking change changes on Fiverr. So like if I had a slow month and my ranking changed, then I would go on to like YouTube or Instagram and I would try and post something here and there, you know, to try and get in business. But otherwise, I mean, the last five years, I've been able to focus on growing my family, um, not worrying about income coming in, you know, but, um, yeah, now what, what what happened to me in January when my ranking went down because I changed my prices two times in a row, I realized like, this is it. Like, I cannot just rely on Fiverr anymore. So at that point, I was like, I only had one gig. So I was like, okay, I need to add more gigs. So then I added that video spokesperson gig. And then with TikTok and everything, and I was like, you know what, maybe if I talk about freelance stuff, that will kind of move people over to my voiceover that was my original intention was to basically like drive people from here to order my voiceovers and my videos that was like the kind of one of my intentions you know and now it's not that at all I could care less about that like I want to I want to really build a community of freelancers that want to make some either side money or make it their full-time job because that's what I did for the last couple of years so I think anybody can do it. I mean, even Mary Ellie, if you're still on here, I mean, you've made like substantial money just from Fiverr. You know, you're doing other things too, but like it keeps you really busy. If you're a good seller and you deliver quality work, like you will get more and more work. Like it can almost become overwhelming how much work can come in from Fiverr. So that, you know, anybody can have that. It's really great. Um, I started on Insta, but I'm enjoying TikTok way more. It's like stories on Insta for me. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. And I feel like you have a heads up. You have like a, a leg up because you already like understand like the culture of Instagram and then also now TikTok. So that's awesome. That's really cool. 
requires way more planning. Yes, it does. It takes so much planning. I just don't. I just don't have that in me. I've made 5K from Fiverr in how long? That's incredible. How many months now have you been on it? I can't remember. It's. I think when we first started this, I started at the end of April. It seemed like your account was almost like the same as me. Does it take long for this to become a substitute for a nine to five? Yes. Um, okay. That's a really great question. And I don't want to say yes or no. But what I can say, that's each month that you make 5K. There you go. Mary Ellen just told you. <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's really, really great. And I actually saw your gig pop up when I was looking for UGC creators when I was helping a console. I saw your gig pop up and I saw you had like eight orders in queue and I was like, damn girl, get it. That's awesome. That's so good. I was like, oh my God, I know her. She's on TikTok. She's killing it. <laughs> um, it took, well, I mean, I was already freelance. So for me, it, that doesn't matter. I mean, it, it didn't, uh, that wasn't the case for me. But does it take long? Um, I'd say like, if you're good at what you do and you're professional with buyers and you deliver quality work, they will come back to you because buyers are looking for good quality sellers, which actually can be hard to find on Fiverr. There's a lot of sellers from like the Philippines, from India, from China, and nothing saying wrong against them, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of those sellers and they don't all like, they're more interested in just getting the income that they're not really like focused on delivering quality work. You know what I mean? So if your focus for Fiverr is to deliver quality work and actually make this a business, it definitely can be a business. It definitely can be, you can make it as big or as little as you want. But like I said, for the last five years, I have not had to worry about my income. I have not had to get a nine to five to substitute it. Like I said, there were a couple months that were slow, but I was relying on one gig. So I definitely urge everybody to start with one gig, but add more gigs in because if you only rely on one gig, some months can be very scary. Just like with any platform, your ranking can change. So you have to like be weary of that, you know? Um, so in May, I made 4K. Last month, I made 5K. This made, ugh, girl, you're killing it. That's amazing. That's so awesome. And your reviews look really good. Like, yeah, that's really, really cool. I need to add you. I'm, I'm creating a new series called my five or success stories of people that I've helped. Like if I've given any tips that have helped you in any way, shape or form, improve sales or your orders or whatever, and you write a comment and let me know, I tag you and I like give you like a shout out. I actually just created the video today and I'm going to post it. Um, I need to make some more gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Don't rely on one. It's dangerous. I, I did it. And look what happened to me in January. I mean, girl, when I tell you December, November, I was a featured voiceover artist on that category. And I was slammed with orders to the point where I was delivering bad work because I just couldn't keep up. Like I was working every single day. I never took a day off for like three months. I was working every single day and it got too much. So I changed my prices you know the story, but there's a couple more people. Essentially, I changed my prices two times that month because I went, I got overzealous and I went and I jumped my prices up 300%. I don't know what the hell I was thinking because when that happened, like I lost a couple repeat buyers. They've come back to me now, but I lost a couple repeat buyers who I rely on. And then I got like no buyer messages. So that at the end of two weeks, I was like, my February is going to suck if I don't change this. So I went back in and I adjusted it again to be only 100% up from my original. And oh my God, I contacted Fiverr support. I contacted the community. I was like, what happened? It was like, I was getting like a thousand impressions a day to literally zero, like zero, three impressions. Like Fiverr was like, F you, what are you doing? And it was a very scary, like January to March was a very scary time for me. My husband had to go pick up a part-time job. Um, 
Yeah, so I definitely recommend to, and that's when I created that UGC gig because I was like, I'm not getting a job. <laughs> I'll create another gig. He's the one that told me to do it, actually. He's been telling me for a long time to do video, but I refused. And uh, I finally did it. And it was, I actually enjoyed doing that way more than voiceovers. Now I get a voiceover order and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, not really, but um, yeah, I need to actually get on it. I made an account, but didn't get really finished setting it up. Yeah, the setup process can be really daunting, which is why I create that one-on-one -on -one consult. Um, and I walk you through every single step and how to finish it and kind of push you to finish it, help you write your description, help you figure out what picture to use. Like I will walk you through the whole thing. And because I'm just kind of offering that, I give a lot more for that hour. Like I don't set for one hour. Like I will help you finish up till getting that gig. So, um, you could check that out in my stand store, but the setup process can be very daunting from start to finish, from literally creating your username to clicking publish on your gig takes like two hours from me with me. Otherwise I'm sure it takes a lot longer because I know like the process already by now. Um, when are you going to make that sound room video? Oh my God. I don't know. So many people are asking me, I know for voiceovers, um, I don't know how to approach it. That's my problem. I really, I do kind of overthink these videos. I try and have like a theme going for the week. I try anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to go about it because there's a lot to it. And I don't know what to exactly show and how to describe it. And like the materials. I set up my sound room in my closet in my house for less than $200. So anyone can do it. Um, what I plan on doing is creating a full course because it's a lot of information to get started with voiceovers because you have to learn how to edit your voiceover to articulate, like just reading scripts. Like, I mean, the whole, like, I feel like there's just so much, which is why I'm focusing so much on UGC because it's so easy, like in terms of you can use your smartphone, whereas voiceovers, there's just more of a learning curve. <clears throat> but I will tell you to just find a corner of your house or a closet where you have, where you have, you know, two walls connecting, go to Walmart and buy twin bedding, a mattress pad. That is better than any soundproofing you can buy on Amazon, which is ridiculously expensive. Just go and get a twin mattress pad. And that thing is phenomenal. I have it right behind me. That's why I keep looking at it. Um, and it is such an amazing soundproofing, uh, material. And then put that on like the ceiling of your closet, the walls of your closet. And then this is actually, <clears throat> I am going to create a video on this. This is my sound box for my mic that I made. Uh, I've, I've evolved it. This is version three or four. I've evolved it. And all of this material is like 50 bucks and it is amazing sound quality. So I'm working on it. Um, I, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to do. So <clears throat> yes, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I promise. Um, do a three part series, make sure you have an Amazon storefront and drive traffic to it. I do, I have an Amazon storefront. Um, yeah, do a voiceover a week. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Look at me. See, I'm getting all frazzled talking about voiceovers. I don't know. I don't know if I want to focus on voiceovers. I don't know. I'm, I haven't decided yet. I haven't. I know a lot of people are interested in it. So I feel like I have to. I'm just not there yet. I need to like figure out my strategy for it. And then I can start posting more confidently about it. I'm weird like that. Um, <clears throat> do a three part series. Make sure. You, yeah. Okay. I hate doing voiceover. I have asthma and you can hear my heavy breathing and pauses. Oh, outsource it. Go to Fiverr, find a, a seller. And if you're really big into UGC and you have a good amount of orders, you can pitch it to them that you're a repeat buyer. So create a buyer account on Fiverr. And most likely when you become a repeat buyer, they'll give you a discount. So, and then you just add that to your UGC cost. So I actually, I plan on making a video like that where... Because let's say you have a thick accent. 
let's say, you know, what you're saying, like you don't like the way you sound, it doesn't sound the way you want it to or whatever, that is definitely an option to outsource it because voiceovers are cheap. Like they're not as expensive as UGC. For instance, I charge $5 for 75 words and I'm, I'm on the cheaper end, which is why I changed my prices and it backfired on me. I'm going to be changing my prices again now that I have my other gigs that's more profitable. But <clears throat> I, that's how cheap I was and I was still making a full-time income. Can you imagine? So yeah, just go onto your voiceover artist um, on, on Fiverr and like you could even look me up as well. I will give you a good deal. And um, you can just make that relationship with them and then just outsource it to them. It'll make it so much easier for you and less stressful for you. It is fast money. It is fast money, um, especially in the natural category, for sure. For sure. I don't know what the eyes are for. <laughs> do you have a class or a one-on-one -on -one about all this? I'm not good on Fiverr. I do. I offer a one-on-one -on -one consulting call. Um, it's, excuse me, it's in my stand link on my bio. It's all the way at the bottom. It's my one-on-one -on -one consulting call. What I do is, hey, how are you? Good to see you on here. Thank you for joining. Um, I love your content, girl. Your perspective is just mwah, chef's kiss. Amazing. She's the one. I'm sorry. What is your name again? Can you put your name again? I'm sorry. I'm bad with names. She's the one, you guys. I just posted a video about, oh, eyes for good tips. Thank you. <laughs> about how I was like, Ugh, UGC, I have to clean my backyard. And I was like, so upset, not upset about it. But then I was like, oh, it's for my kids anyway. And she's like, B, you're getting paid to clean. <laughs> Brio, okay, nice to see you on here. Thank you for joining. Yeah, um, that's the beauty of UGC now. I will never see it as a bad thing. Like I just got an order to do uh, an under cabinet organizer. And I'm like, I have to clean out my under cabinet. It's a freaking mess under my sink. It is awful. I haven't cleaned it in so long. And I was like, Brio made a good point. I'm getting paid to clean under my cabinet now. How cool is that? <laughs> um, yeah, natural voiceovers. I literally, I'm going to make a video about it because I literally just got an order the other day that she's making a UGC TikTok video. It's actually for uh, compression socks. And she's like, listen, like she made a whole brief about it. This is for TikTok. If you don't even want to do it in your studio, you can do it on your phone. It would be even better because TikTok, native TikTok voiceovers are on your phone. They're not professionally produced. They're not sounding like a sales voiceover. And so that's another gig to create is a natural voiceover category where you advertise that you're just recording it on your phone because that's what people are looking for now. I'm getting requests on my professional voiceover gig that I've literally worked with Peloton and IBM and Mars Candy. And I'm the voice of, uh, if you go on YouTube and you type in Family Island, it's a huge video game. They have like a million subscribers. I'm their voice for all their videos. So like I've worked with really big brands with my little studio here and I have people telling me they don't want my studio. So there's a category for that. <laughs> With a voiceover, can I send it to you for your opinion? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Let me um let me go ahead and follow you. I just followed you, so you can message me. Yeah, let's chat if you want to, you know, jump on a call with me. Um, I will like I said, I give more than what I put on there. I'm not gonna hold you to the hour. Like I will help you get set up from start to finish. Um eventually I'll get strict on that, but right now I'm just starting it, so it's kind of like a bonus to be one of my first, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, that is another category. And the other category, oh, you know what? I wrote it in my app, in my notes app. Hold on. Marielle, if you're still here. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, UGC voiceovers. I think that was the one. There was like another category of UGC that I thought of the other day that I was like, oh my God, why aren't people doing this too? I think it's for unboxing. I think that's the one I was thinking about. Marielle, have you created an unboxing gig? But you're busy on your gig, so you don't really need to diversify right now. That's the problem with 
creating multiple gigs because now you have to have different quick responses. You have to have different order requirements. You have a different approach to asking them. And I've had a lot of trouble with that because I have, uh, Hey Marie, how are you? Good to see you on here. Thank you for joining. I just found you so cool. I'm thinking of trying out audiobook, but voiceovers. Oh, stay away from audiobooks. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I tried audiobooks. And I commend anybody who enjoys doing that. That was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. I did one audiobook and I said I would that was my first, my last, and I'll never do it again. So the problem with audiobooks is it it's a ton of reading and you have to keep the tone consistent throughout the entire book. Your character voices have to be the same throughout the entire book. Plus, let's say you don't record in one session and one session has like your AC on and the other session doesn't have your AC on. Now it sounds different. And an audiobook can take you like five hours to read. And then, then most people only want to pay you after they sell the book. I still haven't gotten paid from that voiceover, <laughs> that audiobook. I went on ACX, you know, Amazon's audiobook thing. And I had a bunch of people interested in working with me on it. Um, and they were like, oh, we loved your audition reel. We really want to work with you, but we're commission only. I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> Um, I only listen to audiobooks. I can't focus on actual reading. I sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, it was so hard. And the book was terrible too. <laughs> Listening to it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I had to be like very articulate. Like, and then she went into the office and smiled at John and John, you know, and it's like, you have to keep this pace and you can't go faster or you can't go slower. And I, I talk very fast. So it was like really hard for me. It was, it was torture. I literally, I, when I worked on that, I was like, I told my husband, I was like, babe, I'm never doing this again. This, it was so hard. He's like, but, it, but everyone says it's good money. I'm like, yeah, for a lot of work, I want like good money for like less work. <laughs> like I want to have my life too, you know? Um, <laughs> thank you guys for the follows and the likes. Yes. If, if you're not a follower, that'd be great. If you wanted to follow me, I'd appreciate it very much. Um, I do try and post a lot of like, yeah, so voiceovers, um, like I was telling Marielle uh, earlier, the easiest way to get started with voiceovers right now is creating a natural voiceover gig, or if you're already a UGC creator, a natural voiceover category in and of itself, not just the video part, but just your voice. And that can be done on your phone, you know, and, and it's a little harder to edit on the phone. So that would require like a little bit more information on that. But that's the easiest way uh, to get started is through a natural because you don't have to worry about articulation, tone, speed, you know, you're just talking in your casual voice. So it's a really great way to get started. I don't even know what I'm supposed to sound like <laughs> yourself. Definitely. Well, okay, not like this. Like this is this is too casual. This is like me just talking. So, for instance, I'll show you. I'll show you the one I delivered, actually. It's for Coprez ankle socks. Hold on. So, here's the brief, right? She goes, I'm reading straight from Fiverr right now. For the video we are creating, we want it to look as native to TikTok as possible. Hence, we don't want the video to look like an ad. We instead want the video to blend in with every other post in the TikTok feed. TikTok voiceover best practices. That's what she's sending me. Be conversational, cheery, and excited. Try as hard as you can to not sound like a commercial. I get the exact opposite for my voiceover work. We want it to sound as native to TikTok as possible. Use your own tone and voice with the script. Um, you don't have to make it exactly like the script. Please feel free to ad lib. Da -da -da -da. So here's the script, right? So first thing you do when you're doing voiceovers you get gum. So I use icebreakers, uh, the, uh, not spearmint. I hate spearmint, the peppermint. And it has like, I don't know if you could see, see the little bursts in there. So it like, it's very strong. 
So you chew that, and what that does is it opens up everything in your mouth, so you get rid of all those mouth clicks and, like, that dry, like, nasty-ass sound that those ASMR people do, like, whew, I can't stand that. Nobody can stand that. I mean, most people, anyway. So chew it a little bit, open everything up. I tend to save it because I'm not going to chew it for that long. You just kind of want to open it up, put it off to the side, and then when your mouth gets dry again, put it in again. <laughs> So put it off to the side. Don't worry, I wash that. And then, <clears throat> so something like this would be like, this. so right now this is my normal voice. This is my talking voice. And then this would be like a casual voiceover. If you're not using Caprez for your ankle pains, you're missing out. Here's why. This is not your average ankle sleeve. It's equipped with compression therapy to relieve your ankle and foot pains and has support straps to protect your ankles from injuries. It also improves your mobility and performance. See, I would do that line again because I like slurred my words there. Because you want to open everything up. It also improves your mobility and performance. Plus, it's super comfortable to wear. Coprez offers free shipping worldwide and it arrives right to your doorstep in one to five days anywhere in the U.S. Getting the Coprez ankle sleeve will be your best decision yet. So you see, it's like... How do I describe that? Like, that doesn't sound like me right now talking, you know, it's definitely more on the, I'm trying to sound professional, but I'm also trying to sound relatable. So you got to play with it. <laughs> How does it always sound so cool? <laughs> Thank you. I guess practice. Some, it's hard sometimes because I, I like go into like an announcer voice, you know, and they don't want that. So you got to like, imagine you're talking to Imagine you're talking to like customer service where you're not talking to your friend, but you're not talking to like a colleague or an employer. Like you're talking to a professional, but you don't really care how you sound. That's kind of how I would describe how you should sound for your UGC. Um, and a little cheery, you know, a little up, like smile while you're talking, you know, bring your, your mouth up. Um, but the best advice I can give is chew gum, chew gum, and then try to... Let's see what my customer service voice loves life and rainbows. <laughs> I mean, and then just and then just tone it down, you know, like just bring it down a little bit. Oh, this is so much fun. I love talking with you guys. This is so fun. I was supposed to actually join tonight with another creator. I won't say who, but we had to reschedule for now. Um, but she has a good amount of following and I'm really excited to chat with her and we're going to talk about freelance stuff. So I think that's coming up this week. Um I tried to Google UGC and I still don't understand what it is. That's awesome. I love that you say that because whoever's watching, this is such a good point because it's exactly what I'm saying that UGC concept from TikTok has not transferred over to other platforms. And there's so much opportunity because it's only going to grow from here. And if you get in now, you're getting in early. So if you're not making sales, you guys, for UGC creators that are in here, hang on, keep creating the content, keep trying, keep putting it out there because it will become the next best thing because we don't want to see ads. You and me as consumers, we don't want to see ads. I don't want to see someone selling to me anymore. We don't. My hair looks awful right now. What UGC, yeah. So what UGC is, it's basically like an advertisement, but... Think of it as like, think of it as like an Amazon review. So like you, you get an Amazon product and you really love it and you want everyone to know about it because you're like, wow, like this lip gloss is seriously, it's the best. It's the best kind of chapstick for dry lips. So you create a little video of it in your home. You don't really care about staging. Um, and then you create a video and you upload it to Amazon. That's a very low grade type of UGC, but essentially that's UGC. Like you created the content <clears throat> and then you sent it to the brand or the product or the service. And that's kind of how I describe UGC, where you're creating a video about a product, but not in an advertising kind of way, in a very natural user generated kind of way. So like me personally, the orders that I'm getting from Fiverr anyway, like they've loved my work in the sense that I, you know, I, I tried to like do nice camera angles and like, but it's in my home, like my dirty couch, you know, like 
it's not perfect. And that's what they want. They want it to look real. Um, real reviews, not the ones they paid people just to say is good. Exactly. Exactly. Real reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can tell, right? Like if you look at the videos, you can tell that that, per that video was paid. And then you can't tell if, if it's like a real authentic video. You're like, okay, that's like clearly a review. That's what UGC should look like, in my opinion. Others may differ, but in my opinion, it should look a little bit better than that, but essentially a review of your experience with the product, even though you were paid to present that product, if that makes sense. Um, there's a couple of UTC creators on here, and I've created a post and tagged them, I think, a little while ago. I should probably do that again. Um, I am not experienced in the sense of I've been doing it for years and years. I'm only getting paid to do it by Fiverr buyers, and they've liked my work. So I feel like I kind of know what I'm talking about. But there are other creators like UGC Social. Um, Abigail, I think, is, is one that she's been doing it for years. Uh, Emma is another one. I forget their usernames. Mary Ellie's been doing it now for a while. And so, hey, Denise, how are you? How are you? Denise also is very good at it and explaining it. Um, so, uh, A, what, what? Sh go ahead and follow the people that are on here. They do a great job of explaining UGC. So everybody kind of has like a different kind of concept and everybody has a different way of filming, which is exciting to see. And that's why we're also different. Um, and that's why there's a demand for all of us because we all have a different look. We all have a different feel. We all have different environments. And that's why this is such an amazing opportunity. Um, <clears throat> think of it as your best friend telling you about a product. Exactly. Think of it as your best friend telling you about a product and how great it is with a little bit of finessing on the video part, you know, just a little bit. People who actually use the products. Exactly. UGC versus influence. Is there a difference if you're getting paid for both? So that's a great question. So essentially influencers have been doing UGC now for a very long time, but they post that video on their own account in the hopes that because they have a following, people will then buy it because they have a following and like, you know, Kim Kardashian uh, promoted it. So therefore it must be good. That's influencer marketing. UGC, like we're like no names. We're like, we don't have a face. We don't have a brand. We don't have an identity yet. Anyway, we're paid actors. We just create the content and send it back to the brand and they can do what they want. Now there is, I keep hearing a lot about this, where if you do have a following and you are going to create, you can charge more for that video because you have a following um, and because you have a face. So let's say the brand uh, Fenty, for instance, hires somebody that has like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 to create a UGC video and they post it on their own Fenty account, they will most likely make an agreement with them to give them some kind of commission or royalty or something because they are a known person. You know what I mean? So UGC, that's why that's also very exciting about UGC is because anybody can be in it and anybody can do it, but we can't charge as much as influencers. That would be unrealistic. You know what I mean? Um... Hey, Denise. Uh, I'm wondering this too. Yeah, for UGC and Influencer. So that's kind of the difference. So again, that's why I think UGC is exciting and it's a very lucrative opportunity and we're just at the beginning stages because like you said, you Googled it and you couldn't find much. You can YouTube it. You're not going to find much. What you will find is TikTok references. So I'm actually planning, I'm building out my YouTube account right now. Um, I actually started with zero and now I have 26 subscribers, woohoo, which I didn't think was possible on YouTube because it's much harder to grow over there, but I'm planning on creating some longer form content about UGC and because I feel like that's something a lot of people are searching for now. Influencers get commission and UGC creators get paid for the video or photo up front from the company. Exactly. Yep. Is payment solely depends. A lot of hype UGC on TikTok too. Is payment solely depends. Sorry, I don't know. Um, as far as payment goes, I think what people are doing is half up front and half when they deliver. Um, because I work on Fiverr and I'm only getting my UGC work from Fiverr, everything gets paid through the app. And you have to purchase the, the gig. You have to pay me first 
before I do anything, before I even send you my shipping details, which is another reason I love Fiverr. Um, so I get paid outright first, and then I do the work, and then I send them my shipping details. So that's why I like Fiverr. With other, if you're doing outside, then you'll do probably like a 50% up front, 50%, you know, when you get the product. Um, YouTube, I met. Sidewalker Daily on YouTube is a really good channel for you, do you see? Yeah, I think she's the main one right now. Exactly. There's so much room for growth over there. Could you imagine you hit a viral trending video right now on YouTube about UGC? Like your account will jump immediately. So I need to get on that. I'm trying to work on that this week. I just got this backdrop from Amazon. <clears throat> um, did get my b first booking through there. Yay! That's awesome. Congratulations. That is so cool. I'm so happy to hear that. <coughs> um, if you need any more help, I have some services there. I can guide you through it, but that is amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Once you get one, two, it'll start rolling. Make sure to deliver good quality work. And if you deliver good quality work, you'll get repeat buyers and they'll love what you're doing. How do you start it? What do you need? Um, surrender and flow UGC is user generated content. We've kind of already like talked a lot about that. Um, if you want to scroll up in the chat, a lot of people were, were mentioning what it is. Uh, how do you start it and what do you need? So how I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, thank you. How I started with UGC is I set up a gig on Fiverr and buyers started coming to me. <clears throat> what other people do is you create a portfolio, a website, and basically start promoting your work that way. And then you start pitching to brands on Twitter or TikTok or Instagram, whatever like platform you prefer. But Twitter is kind of the big one right now. I personally haven't done that because I'm not trying to focus on my UGC career. I'm more trying to focus on this brand that I'm creating here. But I do do UGC work like through Fiverr. So I get that has become more profitable for me than my voiceover work. So. Oh, my God, you just sent me a rose. Oh my god, thank you. Okay, what's your username on Fiverr? Let's look it up. <clears throat> oh my god, thank you. That's the first time I've ever gotten that. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. You like totally, I can't wait to Babe, I got a rose. I'm so excited to tell my husband now. That's so awesome. <laughs> he said, Yay! Thank you. That's really sweet. Do you want me to check out your gig right now? No, oh, I feel like I'm losing my voice. I need to calm it down. My kids are sleeping. <clears throat> I couldn't find UGC on the comments. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I have the voice right now to actually explain it again, but it's all over the comments. You can, anybody that has a UGC in their title um, in the comments, just scroll up, follow them, and they give... <clears throat> they give a lot of great information on what UGC is, but anybody can do it with a nice smartphone. If you're already creating content, it's just much easier to get started on it. Guys, I think I'm going to have to jump off in a little bit because my voice is starting to like, da -da -da -da. <clears throat> I feel like I'm getting sick. My husband came home with a cold, Ugh, which would make like, I swear, like the fifth time I'd be getting sick this year. It's like awful. Um, so I'm going to jump off in just a minute. But yeah, Marie, I'm going to wait for you. If you want to tell me your username, I do off. I know. And as a voiceover artist, losing your voice is like detrimental. It's like not. And that's why I haven't had a good year because what is this on my shirt now? I have lint on me. Um, that's why this year was really tough when my gig dropped uh, and then it started coming back up. I kept getting sick and then my mom had medical issues so I had to pause my gig a lot, which is the downside of Fiverr. When you pause your gig, you lose money. So it, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah. This year has been like one thing after another. My my four-year-old got salmonella poisoning like last month. I'm like, what the? I've never in my life have known anyone to get salmonella poisoning. Like it was so, we were in the hospital for four days. You guys, I did voiceovers on my laptop in the hospital with my daughter. Like, it's why it was wild. It was a it's been a crazy year, man. But I'm enjoying this. This is a good, very healthy, good distraction for all of that nonsense that's going on. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants to drop their username, 
I'm probably actually not going to do any more. Marie, I'll do yours because thank you for the roses. It's really sweet. I'm going to do your gig audit really quick. And then um, in the future, if you guys follow me, join me with my lives, I usually give a discount on my gig audits. Uh, so you can order it in my stand store and I will go through your entire gig and tell you exactly what you need to do to optimize it and get some more orders coming in. We got over COVID, lost my job too. Reason why I started looking into UGC. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm telling you, Fiverr will be such a resource for you. Some tea and honey. Yeah, I actually have a, it's called Throat Coat, and it's a special tea. You guys should look into it too. It's a, it's called Throat Coat, and it's what uh, performers and voiceover artists and singers drink when they are losing their voice because it has like elm bark root. It's very like soothing on the throat. I'm going to go get, I'm going to make that. <coughs> What did you have to do to treat him? My daughter, the for salmonella, we were in the hospital and uh, <clears throat> she had terrible fevers, like 103, and then had blood in her stool. And then uh, when she had blood, I was like, okay, we need to go to the hospital. Like, this is serious now. And so we went and they basically gave her fluids and antibiotics and it just had to run its course. We were literally there for four days. It was pretty terrible. Um, I actually don't know the answer. Save your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, girl, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to hop off. I've been on an hour and a half and I talk really loud. So my voice, you can hear it, right? Like it's starting to go. Ooh. That's not good. That's not good for me. So I'm going to have to actually, uh oh, <clears throat> babe, I need some tea. <coughs> I'm going to have to jump off. Guys, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for joining me on Saturday night. If you are interested in doing this, let's make this week a productive week. You can do it. If you're still, if the girl that's still on here to create content, start creating content that will be really good practice. And if you're interested on Fiverr, look it up, look at what services you could offer. You know, there are ways to make money with your freelancing skills and you just have to dedicate some time to it. So let's do it. Let's rock it. Have an awesome weekend. Enjoy tomorrow and Monday. Let's get to work. We're going to rock this freelance thing. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. Marie, Go ahead and message me and let's chat. All right, have a good night, guys.